Hello sunshine, this is Joy from Michigan in the US and it is Fan Friday. This is my painting from last Friday. I actually think it goes this way um, or maybe this way, who knows. Anyways, um, today I'm going to do a matching painting. It's a puddle pour. I'm going to do a lot more puddles than just the two I did for this one and then wreck them and stretch it and see what we get. Before I get too far into that, I wanted to just share with you guys just real quick because I'm super excited and you know not everybody gets excited about paint so this is Green Apple by Modern Masters it is such a pretty color so I will be doing a painting very soon with these new colors that I got look it's so new I haven't even taken the, the label off the seal off I should say but I wanted to show you guys these colors because I'm super excited. I'm going to let some ideas roll around in my head for a couple days. All right, let's see if I can get that. It's super shimmery, which of course, really hard to see on camera. But So there's that one. And then I've got this lovely deep Prussian blue hue by Liquitex. And I bought this pearl electric blue by Arteza. I don't know, it's really hard to see the pearl in it. Can you see? A little bit, kind of. So anyways, those are some colors that I'm looking forward to playing with very soon. So for today's pour, matching, so we're gonna stick to the same colors I used in the previous Fan Friday, which is turquoise plus dragonfly glaze, which of course I can never get, I can never show it on camera. You never can see the glitter in it. And I'm I'm kind of wanting to do some experiments with the dragonfly glaze because I can't really see it in this. So I'm thinking it might be a better um, product for my varnish coat rather than the colors. And you could just put it over one color, let that dry, and then do varnish again. So anyways, getting way off track here. So black, white, and then I have my black and silver mix for my puddles. Just, I, I'm not set up the way I should be. Usually I try to get my paints all ready to go and the bottles opened and all that and I didn't, so I apologize. So if you are new to my channel, Fan Friday is something I've just started. I'm looking for recommendations for technique, colors, whatever, you've, whatever you'd like to see. If there's a color combo that you're dying to see someone try and you don't wanna try it first, shoot that out in a comment on my page here and or on my channel here and I will add that to my list for Fridays. Um, you could send me three do's, three don'ts. Um, yeah, whatever you guys think of, let me know. So let's hop in, puddle pour. Let's start with some black and silver. I, I haven't really thought this through a whole lot, so I don't know how many puddles I'm gonna do, but I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. A lot, I wanna do a lot. And I won't have to do too many colors in any of them. Boy, this canvas looks in inverted here that might be an issue because it is inverted ah i got a bum canvas i should have checked this one a little closer there's your first tip of the day when you're buying your canvases check them and i i did not and i thought about this and i really should have um i did not spray the back of this with water and normally i would do that first and then either let it just air dry or sometimes I'll hit it with my embossing gun to let that dry and it'll kind of pull your canvas taut again. So. Um, I really don't want to do one there. That's just going to be a dot, an extra dot. All right. I'm having the same issue that I had before. Maybe if I pour from higher. So I've noticed when I'm pouring from a cup, it tends to pour in like an oval shape instead of a circle. So I'm gonna try pouring. It seems to work, but it's harder to control how much paint comes out. So if you pull it up higher. <laughs> this is gonna be the messiest puddles you ever did see. So if you have not already subscribed to my channel, y'all, I'd be so excited if you would do that. Last I checked, I had 276 subscribers, which was really, really exciting. I am trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the beginning of April. I never remember the exact date. I want to say the 5th, but I'll double check that. My one year anniversary with YouTube. So if you could help me hit that goal, I would be super, super excited about that. 
Well, that's a turquoise. Yeah, I definitely should have put this in a little squirty bottle because it was <laughs> much easier to control that way, but that's okay. Black and silver, let's do that. Oh, I really didn't want to do that there. Silly me. I've been trying to avoid the black and white together because they tend to make gray, and I don't always want gray, but we'll do a couple of them like that. Why not? Let's see what happens. And then we'll do blue again. So with a puddle pour, I mentioned this in my last video. Oh, I don't want... Do I? Do I? Don't I? Let's put some black there first. I don't want to do just two colors. So yeah, I'm putting my black with my white. Um... I lost my train of thought, guys. I have no idea what I was gonna say. Oh, you get your colors stay nice and crisp. You don't get the mixing that you would with other techniques. So that's one of the fun things about a puddle pour. It is a little bit of a slow process, but take your time and try to enjoy it. I tell you, it's been a long week. Um, for me and I am feeling worn out, but it's okay. So I, when I'm tired, I have a hard time slowing down because I just want to get stuff done so I can relax. But this is supposed to be my relaxation, so. <laughs> This is just the regular black. So I do have black and then I have black and silver. And there is this very slight difference, nothing huge, but there is a difference in when it dries. Oh, I've got a goober. Every once in a while, I get these little clumps in my paint. Oh, this is not a little one either. Goodness sakes, that one was like two inches long. Okay, moving on. Oh, there's another one. Did you guys see that? My goodness. I wonder if I've got, either this wasn't closed all the way. I don't know. I think there was another one there. Okay. <sighs> so I hope you all are doing well. This uh, channel was started, I say this a lot, so if you're bored of this, I'm sorry. Um, it was started as a way to get me in my art room to do some art therapy because I was in quarantine and it's been just just for everybody. Um, I think everybody would say the same thing. It's been rough. This whole pandemic thing, I, I never wanted to be a part of history in that way. So, so this is my coping mechanism and it's a wonderful coping mechanism. It really is helpful. And in the end, I end up with some really pretty things. So I would kind of love that. All right, I don't want these all ended in blue. So I think we're gonna stop there with the blue. I'm gonna clean off my finger. Because somehow I managed to get blue all over me. All right, let's do some black. I want some to be white on the top. And we'll do some with the black and silver. This is a really fun technique because it's just, I don't know, I guess every abstract art kind of has this claim to fame, but it's it's just relaxed. It's you don't have to plan anything. You're not expecting anything in particular. I'm just going to add a little bit right here, guys. Just some blue. Just to fill in that gap a little. Although I'm sure I've got plenty of paint. Okay. So, yeah. I like this technique. It's um, like you can just clear your mind and just put paint on a canvas. All right. Oh, my goodness. My camera moved, guys. All right. Bear with me. 
I'm gonna, I'll pause okay, it, I'll be right That's a little better. All right, so now comes the wrecking stage, which is a lot of fun. So thank you to, oh, I'm gonna forget someone. There were two people that mentioned this, CE Angel, and it was either, I think it was Barbara, who they've both been on my channel for quite a while, and I love hearing, hearing from my faithful watchers, and they are definitely in that category. So thank you for this suggestion. I hope you like it. Kind of like that one little heart there, but I, I feel like we need some more wrecking lines through here. Okay, that's plenty of wrecking, I think. Now comes the fun part because there's absolutely no way to know which way this is gonna end up, but I think it's gonna be pretty. You know what, I'm gonna pop some air bubbles first. I like to use my embossing wand for this. Just a little embossing electric little tool. this probably more air bubbles will come up and we'll just do that again if you have been watching my channel for a while you may know that it's been very very chilly here in Michigan and we are finally warming up we're gonna be in the and we have one day next week in the 60s which is unusually warm but I am just excited my art room is heating up nicely now it's not nearly so cold so that's that's nice. I am trying to learn to stretch my paint slowly. I am I'm really, really bad about just jumping right in, stretching my paint um, in a process that takes seconds rather than minutes. So that heart's already gone wonky. I feel like we got a lot of black in this one. Might need to stretch out some of that blue. And I'm just watching the weight of my paint so that I'm moving what I want to move. Yeah, the edge of this canvas is a little bit off. For sure. But I'm getting some really lovely effects. I feel like this one's much more intricate than the last one. So I kind of like that. Okay, let's bring it back. And then I want to stretch over this edge of the canvas here. There. Alright, let's bring it back. I feel like I'm getting more cells and more lacing, and I think that's because um, I'm stretching it more. I'm wiggling it more. The last one was it was a pretty quick tilt to get the whole canvas covered. Right over this edge. There we go. Bringing it back. And then I'm going to, there's, I need to get some more paint down on this corner here on the edge of the canvas because this is a deep edge canvas. I, I don't know if I said that at the beginning. Um, both the previous puddle pour and this one were done on two inch deep canvas. So if you are new to my channel, you probably don't know this yet, but if you've watched very many of my videos, you know I'm perhaps overly concerned about the edges of my paintings. Um, I really, really want them to match everything else. So I get kind of fussy about that. Uh, by no means is that necessary. Not something you have to do, but um, I, I just like that it gives my 
uh, customers more options when it comes to um, hanging, displaying the art, especially with a two inch deep one, because these are deep enough, you could really just put this on a bookshelf um, to display it and that would be fine. So right now I'm just trying to gather up some of the paint that's dripping off the bottom and then putting it on my edge. So it, it ne doesn't necessarily exactly match what was already there, but it will help what is there to pull down the edge. Um, I can't, normally I would scoop stuff up, stuff up off my table, but I have wet paint on my table. So if I did that, I would, sorry, my arm's probably right in your view right now. Um, I would mix it with the other paints that are on my table. It would be a problem. So, oh, I feel like I'm super chatty this time, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so this edge did not get stretched at all. So let's, which I hate to lose this right here because I really like that, but, oh, and there's, a, there's another goober. All right, let's get that first. No, oh, it's gonna just be one of those that doesn't wanna come out. Okay. So I need to move all of the paint. Here, let's see if I can show you. See all that canvas showing? So just, it is definitely slowing down now, the, the amount of movement I'm getting from my paint. Just a little bit more. I feel like this one needed some extra stretching. There was too much paint in the middle there. Wow, is this one different than the last one? All right, so now I'm just tilting for composition. It's interesting because I definitely feel like this one is a lot busier than the last one. And I'm not sure if I like it or not, if I like all that busyness. So I am tipping off just a little bit. Okay. All right. Just checking my edges again to make sure there's enough paint. This edge closest to me is looking very nice. Um, the other edges, they're okay. I'm gonna help this one back towards the top of the camera here because there's still canvas. I really thought that wouldn't be an issue with the amount of paint that I just poured over that edge, but it's just not flowing evenly. So I'll help it along and then it will pull that paint down and hopefully it will look lovely. All right. So my next couple pours that I have in mind are going to be much larger, so I'm still trying to think through how I'm going to set that up, but all right, let me know what you guys think of this one. I think, I think I'm done. I don't like this right here, but I think if I tilt too much more, it's going to be too much. Let me see how much movement we have. Not much. Yeah, I think we need to leave it because I think if I keep messing with it, it's going to end up ruining it. I do like that it's very, it feels very off-centered, which I, I prefer. I don't like anything right dead center. Everything's kind of off to one side or the other. So I will hit this with heat one more time. I don't know that I need to do that video. I will do that quick and then I will take you guys in for a close-up and add some photos at the end here. And I look forward to reading your comments. What did you think of this one? What do you want me to do for next Fan Friday? Um, I do, I still have not managed to get my chunky cells again, so that's still on my list. But I'd love to have some more uh, thoughts, ideas for my Fan Friday. So thanks so much for joining me, guys. I will see you on the next one. All right, guys, here they are side by side. This one will show you kind of what the colors will dry as. They're a little bit darker than what you're gonna see on the wet paint, but not a huge difference. I do like this. I don't know. As I'm looking at the two together, I really do like this. So when I was talking earlier about the crisp lines, you'll see some pretty good examples of that here with the white and that blue line, if I can get it to focus. Down here, we've got some pretty um, 
straight blue. I don't know what else to call it. And then we've got some lacing, and a lot of times that happens with black and white. They do lace nicely and create cells fairly well as, as well. So, looking forward to my next Fan Friday. Let me know what you think I should do. And I will see you next time.